The food and treats that we feed our pets matter, but it's more than just feeding fresh foods. We also need to be aware of the sourcing of those foods, including how they're raised. Susanna DeMossi is the founder of Forever Love Club Company, dedicated to providing you with transparent sourcing of the highest quality treats and shoes for your dogs. I'm more than a fan. I'm also a customer and Kim, my dog, is a fanatic when it comes to the treats we get from Forever Love Club. In today's episode, we chat about so much more than treats and shoes, including her passions as a ballerina, regenerative farming, and so many duck heads. <laughs> Plus, there's one part, well, well, I'll, I'll let you take a listen. You'll have to let me know your favorite tip from today's episode on socials. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. By the way, I have Grizzly here with me. <gasps> Look at that sweet baby. Oh my goodness. You know? My my first dog was a Pomeranian, and I, she was probably a mix, but she looked very much like a Pomeranian. She had, she, she had like the the longer snout, though. Like Grizzly has the flatter snout, but mm -hmm. um, not like super flat, but you know, flatter. And um, oh my goodness, she was such a hot mess. I I loved her so much. I, she is the reason that I, I, I she's the reason I do what I do. Because, Aww. yeah, and, and it was so funny because just today, I don't know if you saw it, Rodney Habib posted about a study showing um, fresh food with seizure dogs, decreasing seizures. And like mm. 10 years ago, I found this out with Claire. Wow. She, I just happened to be like, let's feed the dogs fresh food. And I started making like Dr. Judy's pup loaf and stuff like that. And like six months later, I looked at my husband and I'm like, Claire hasn't had a seizure in forever. That's and amazing. I know, right? Like, <laughs> it's just the, the craziest things. And I'm like, I can't prove anything, but <laughs> I know it happened. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I feel like that is, but now that we're evolving about like learning about fresh food and minimally processed food, now, thank God we have all this new scientific evidence coming out about how, you know, that's the best way to feed your dog. So I always commend people that I'm chatting with or people that I talk to who are like, oh yeah, I've been feeding raw for like 15 years, 20 years. It's like, you really had to not follow the status quo. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We just had a lady come in to measure our master closet to kind of, my husband wants, I mean, we, we've, we just built the house, but you know, they never do anything with closets. They're just kind of mm -hmm. blank spaces. And, um, we were talking to her and she was like, Oh no, I feed my dog a raw food diet. And I'm like, good on you. <laughs> and she, you know, an older, like she had already retired from one profession and was like, just doing this for fun. So like, she wasn't like our, our, well, you're younger than me. So I'm going to say your age, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, where it's like a little more trendy to be a pet parent. You know what I mean? Like for us, it's like, oh no, my pets are my kids. Like for her generation, it's very much like, 
you know, pet, pets are second class citizens. But anyway, so. <laughs> For some, well, then I feel like. Yeah. There's like people in my generation who, like I saw this study about how people are having children later. Mm-hmm. And to kind of make up for that, a lot of more people are having dogs and therefore treating their dogs more like children. So there's that. Other yeah. Side. Well, I'm, I'm super excited to get the advent calendar, by the way. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, Kim doesn't like the cho- She's such a princess. She is <laughs> such a princess. It's funny because she's like only meat. Like she will not eat it. If it's not, not meat or sometimes cheese, even not even all cheeses, but like cheese, she'll take it, but that's animal based and, and meat. If it's not, if it's, a, if I try to hand her a fruit or vegetable, she's like, mm, I don't know what you're thinking. But then when it comes to like bones and chews, she's just like, no, not, not doing it. Um, and I, I don't even, I can't even tell you how many things I've tried, but she's just like, Mm-mm, not doing it. The only thing she will do is like, if I give her a marrow bone, she'll look at it a little bit, but then she waits for me to scoop out the marrow to give to her. <laughs> she's like, no, you can do this for me. <laughs> Doesn't chew on anything at all? No. That's, like That's rare. It, yeah. Well, even I did get like a larger piece of salmon skin um that i knew she was gonna have to chew and she was like she walked around the house for a while like i don't know if i'm gonna do that like with it in her mouth like i don't know about this and she did end up kind of like i think because she walked around for so long it had started to soften a little bit so then she started to like munch on it and break it up a little bit but yeah she's very very like I, I know. I, I'm I'm amazed. She's she just turned nine, so I'm really amazed that her teeth are as in good a shape as they are because she just won't chew on anything. Like, and I'll I'll brush them every once in a while. I'm really bad about brushing them. <laughs> but he doesn't even let me brush his teeth. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure when your um, subscription is renewing, uh, but in this month's box the fish that the seafood that I'm sending out, it's flounder skin rolls. So we just got the, I think it was the whiting fillets. So I think it's going to be, I think I do every two months because she just can't eat all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But like in the advent calendar, I'm going to try to get her. I'm going to try to tempt her Mm -hmm. um, with any chews that are in it. And then if she doesn't like them, I'm going to give them to her her friends <laughs> um because she's just like she is a princess well i'm curious to see about the um the flounder skins because it's like a chew but it's a little different so let's see yeah that is interesting and that's one of the things that i wanted to talk to you about but um before i ask you about the chews and treats specifically um tell me a little bit about you and Grizzly and why you started Forever Love Club and what it is because people are like, Forever Love Club, what is that? <laughs> yeah, so Forever Love Club um, makes and sells dog treats and shoes that are single ingredient and transparently sourced from either organic or pastured farms. And majority of um, Forever Love Club customers are members where people sign up to receive a monthly box from us. And you can you can choose your delivery times, just like you were explaining, if you want to skip a month, if you want to pause, whatever it is. So you can make it super flexible. Um, and we do offer some individual items now and now selling in some pet stores. But yeah, so majority of our customers are members. And the inspiration is this little baby right here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was my childhood dream to have a dog. And I could never get one growing up because multiple family members of mine are allergic to dogs and cats. So when I finally graduated from college, I got Grizzly and I knew I needed to do something in the pet industry because I grew up doing ballet for 15 years of my life. It was my first passion. Uh, Ballet was my first love. (laughs) And... When I got Grizzly, 
picking out food for him, picking out even just accessories for him, training him, learning as much as I can about how to give him the best life excited me more than ballet ever had. And that's when I knew that I needed to do something within the, the pet dog industry. And I had turned down a job in corporate finance coming out of college. I studied finance and then, um, I started the company and originally it was dog accessories. So I was selling um, mainly clothes like jackets, shirts, dresses, shoes. Um, and that was from the summer of 2020 through January of 2021, which in January of 2021, I hit a pause on selling those things because a number of reasons, but mainly I wanted to make a bigger impact in the lives of dogs, do something that's not just like you buy it, you take a cute picture, it's in your drawer, you know, like, and, and another thing is like, I, I had ordered BarkBox. So I was getting BarkBox and I was looking at the treats. I was like, why are there so many added ingredients in here? And then I was looking at the toys and thinking, Grizzly doesn't even really play with them. And I just felt like, it was creating a lot of garbage in the world. And so was my business with the accessories and the things that don't really get used. So that's why Forever Love Club is super focused on being eco-friendly as well. So not only do our farm partners utilize regenerative agricultural practices, but our packaging is 100% compostable. Our mailers are made from 100% recycled content. And that's why um, the motto is good for our pups, good for our planet. I so love that because I actually tried many of the subscription boxes myself um, for my dog, Claire and Gracie that I don't, if people are watching the video, like you can't really see Gracie up here, but Claire's down here. And um, then with Kim, I kind of, once I got Kim, I was like, well, let me get her some boxes too. And I went through a few different ones Um and there was one in particular that I'm not going to name, but if you go back through my YouTube, you can probably find it. And it was supposed to be all U.S. based, like everything made in the U.S., blah, blah, blah. Great. Like that's that something that's important to me. I tried it. And after like the first couple of boxes, I'm looking through and I'm like, the treats say they're made in the U.S., the toys say they're made in China. And I'm like, what is this? This is not what like I signed up for. Like there were, there were like bandanas and things that didn't have tags on them. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, maybe they're handmade here or blah, blah, you know, whatever. So after a couple of months and everything still kept coming and saying China, I'm like, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> and I just quit it all. Like all of, I was like, no, no more. And I went through the same thing. It was like, didn't love the treats and my dogs were not thrilled with most of the toys because a lot of them I've, I noticed it, at least the way it was are like tennis ball based and I have mm -hmm. smaller dogs. And even though, you know, when you sign up, you say you have a small dog, a medium dog, large dog, whatever it is. Um, yeah, they, a lot of them had like tennis balls in them and my dogs just weren't into that. So I, I get that. And I appreciate your journey as well, because yeah, it's not like, it's not all about consumerism. Like that's, you know, getting away from that is so important. And that's at one of the other reasons why I, ch I personally choose Forever Love Club over some other subscri subscription boxes um, is one, because I know you're, you know, a small woman owned business and that's important to me, but it is eco-friendly. And you really do in the transparency and I'm going to let you talk. I promise. I just have one more thing to say. Like, I love, 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 love the regenerative farming practices because that's how I feed myself if ever possible. Like mm -hmm. for us as humans, you know, going to the grocery store is like, first of all, I hate going to the grocery store. My husband goes to the grocery store, <laughs> but all of the supplements I buy myself because I, because I take um, bovine organ supplements, they're desiccated organs. They are all from regenerative farms, like 100%. Cause I need, I need to know that like this, 
base level that I'm putting in my body every day is like the absolute best I can get. And I want that for my pets too. And I want that for the planet because I was just watching a reel the other day. Factory farming obviously is a huge, huge problem. And it's like, how do we fix it? Well, (laughs) you know, financially, I don't have any idea how we fix it financially, but regenerative farming is the answer. Getting there, I don't know how we get there, but that is the answer. (laughs) 100%. And you touched on a couple of things there that I want to go back to. So let's not talk about regenerative agriculture, but going back to Super Zoo, okay? There's, I'm not going to name the company, but there was a company, it it was like natural this, natural that, like that was their name, something like that. And it said that they're like literally in their logo, it says what state they're in. Like that's a part of their logo. And like a consumer looks at that, even me, like I walked up there like, awesome, US based company. I'm so excited to see what they have because it was like single ingredient stuff. So basically, the, I'm going to make up a state. So let's say Ohio. So basically it says like Ohio, USA in the logo. So I was so excited thinking, wow, look, transparently sourced, um, American made treats and shoes. Great. So I walk up to the sales guy. I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. Do you guys do your sourcing in Ohio? And he was like, we are based in Ohio and that's where we do all our quality checks. We make sure every product is perfect in Ohio. And I then say, okay, but do you work with farms in Ohio to get your ingredients? And he was like, our facility is in Ohio. And we look at every single treat and chew to make sure that it is up to our quality standards and everything is clean. So then I asked the third time, I had to ask three times. I say, yes, but are the farms you get the products from in Ohio? And that's when he told me, actually, we got our product from all over the world. But the logo says Ohio on there. So... Now, this ties into the whole regenerative agriculture importance and movement. And this also ties into why uh, Forever Love Club is transparently sourced. Because not only do we deserve to know where our food is coming from, but if someone wants to feed their dog the highest quality, then they des- they deserve to do that and not be lied to and say it's coming from some random place where who knows what kind of hormones and antibiotics these animals are fed. Yeah, so regenerative agriculture. <laughs> Why is it important? Well, first of all, the products that are made naturally, or not the products, the animals that are raised naturally without hormones are not returning hormones through their feces into the earth because the animals who are being given hormones and antibiotics are then returning that those substances, harmful substances to the earth, Mm -hmm. into our water system, into the soil and the water system affects our drinking water. So it's, it's not just, not just that you get a higher quality, higher nutrient content meat. If the animal is either organic or pastured, but you're also helping the environment not only stay healthy, but try to help it return to its um, natural state of homeostasis. And the it actually helps with global warming. It helps with uh, CO2, like carbon in our air. And I think you brought up a very good point about how do we get to a place where where that is predominantly how, how we get rid of factory farming and have more regenerative agricultural farms. It's just by supporting more companies that more companies and more farms that are also using meats that are organic or pastured. Yeah. And, you know, I think so many people don't even know what regenerative farming is. Um, it, mm-hmm. It's really sad beca- to me because it's like, this is how we've done things throughout the history of the world. And then, you know, suddenly, what are we like 60, 80, maybe a hundred years into this, depending on 
what part you're looking at in into the industrialization yeah. of everything and and we've just completely forgotten how it's supposed to be and yeah mm -hmm. it is so important that we know especially for our dogs that have sensitivities that have allergies that I, I say it's especially important for these dogs because we need to know with a hundred percent accuracy what we're putting in their bodies. But the truth mm -hmm. is when we're not paying attention to this, we're creating more and more dogs through generation after generation who are going to have these sensitivities and allergies. So the more we can do for our dogs today that don't even have these issues yet cross our fingers, right? They don't have these issues yet. The better off we can be later on down the road, generations to come. If we're improving the lives of dogs today, we're improving the lives of dogs um, in generations to come. But yeah, so regenerative farming, I think, is is so great. That's one of the reasons why I have switched um, almost not 100% because there are some other treats that my pets love. But like I, I, I love the, the treats that I get from Forever Love Club. And so does Kim. And it also gives uh, us an opportunity to try new things that mm -hmm. we can't get on the shelf somewhere. So I, I know I told, I don't know who I told. It was probably on my podcast, probably somewhere on YouTube. Um, but Kim Forever, her favorite treat was a chicken heart. And then we got beef tongue in the mail from Forever Love Club, and she just went nuts. Like, she's such a good dog. Like, we can leave food out anywhere. And my husband and I are so, so classy. We often eat on TV trays. <laughs> and, like, we can have um, food sitting out on the TV trays. She doesn't mess with it. She doesn't touch it. She doesn't, like, walk up and sniff nothing. Like, she's just like, that's not where I'm supposed to be. She doesn't bother it. I had set a beef tongue on my tray um, because I was going to go do something and then do some training with her. I was going to break it up. No, she got on the couch, on the tray, grabbed the beef tongue. I was like, what are you, like, you never in your life have ever done this. So I'm like, okay, now I know we have a new favorite treat. That's amazing. <laughs> That's such um, great feedback. And thank you yeah. so much for always leaving the most positive, kind reviews and always posting about the products and stuff. It's really, it's really very kind and so helpful. Well, you know, I, I, I don't do it so that you say that, but thank you. <laughs> I do it because I'm like, other people need to see what I see. I don't think, um, Learning something means anything if I can't share it with other people. And that's why I do this. That's why I do the podcast. That's why I do YouTube. That's why I do all the things is because whatever I learn, I need to share with the anyone who will listen. <laughs> um, because if I can spark some curiosity in someone else, then maybe they can do it better for their pets too. Um, so... Before you started Forever Love Club, but even now, I I'm sure you have, because you make them, you have more treats than Grizzly could ever possibly want or need. Um, so I don't know if you ever walk into a store and look at the treats that are available, but probably before you started this, you did. What is it that you look at? What are you looking for um, when you look at treats? So like somebody at home, you're listening right now and you're like, what's in my pantry? And you go grab a bag. Like what? What would you say? What are you looking for on that on that label? Yeah, great question. So, and this is not just for treats, but also for your dog's food. You want to be looking at ingredients that, as many ingredients as possible, that are naturally found just in animals because dogs are evolved to eat they're carnivores for many reasons. And yes, there's some benefits of certain fruit and vegetables for your dog. They have to be low glycemic for that reason. But dogs are mainly evolved to eat meat and eat whole prey. And in the wild, they used to hunt down an animal and eat all of it, eat the organs, eat the glands, eat the skin, the fur, the feathers. So when you're picking a treat, 
you really want to steer away from any ingredient that is human made, that's made in a lab, any ingredient that you don't recognize. You want everything to be as natural and species appropriate as possible. And that is the most important thing because even like I've seen so many uh, dog treats that say, oh, all natural. And then I look at the ingredient list and it says vegetable glycerin. And if you Google vegetable glycerin, it'll say, oh, this is like not a harmful ingredient. It's a preservative. But then if you read a little deeper, and it actually says that there's no research done about how this affects um, dogs or humans long term. And I'm pretty sure the people who are listening to this, you don't want to, and I don't either, you don't want to feed your dog something that is not species appropriate for them and you don't know how it's going to affect them. Because dogs age about seven times faster than humans. So whatever is bad for us is also bad for them. And that's the preservatives, that's the chemicals, that's the additives, that's the sugars. So definitely no preservatives, no sugars, no carbs, any corn. We don't want any of that stuff. So I look for a short ingredient list and species appropriate, mainly meat-based ingredients and as little ingredients as possible. The shorter the ingredient list, the better. Yeah, I really try to stick to single ingredient treats with my pets when, whenever possible. Um, I think that's just like the best bet for the lay person. You know what I mean? Like just, I don't have any idea. I don't understand a lay, you know, what all this mumbo jumbo is <laughs> on a label. And first of all, if it's mumbo jumbo, stay away from it. But, um, yeah, vegetable glycerin. I'm I'm actually really glad you brought that up because I literally have no idea how they make that, but it's obviously a derivative. And um I know that seed oils are killing us. Like if we just mm-hmm. think about um vegetable oil, um peanut oil, like all of these oils that we are deriving from seeds are killing us. And I see it so often in pet food and pet treats too. And I know like I, I'm going to have to talk to a cat nutritionist one of these days to find out exactly what. Um, and when I have Destiny White back on, I don't know if you know Destiny, she's pretty awesome. She is graduating. She's getting her, um, she's, she's going to be a nutritionist, um, next month at the end of December. So I'm gonna have her back on, but, um, Sunflower oil is in like almost every recipe I see for cats. And I'm, I'm like, okay, there's obviously something in the sunflower oil that is providing something that AFCO says our cats need, right? Like there's something in it that it's in every (laughs) freaking recipe that I can find for, for cat food. But I know at the same time that seed oils are killing us. So I need to figure out like how we can get around, <laughs> around this. But, uh, t- back to the vegetable glycerin, it's, it's a derivative. And in my mind, because I know seed oils are killing us, I feel like it, it just has to be in that same category. I think. Exactly. I completely agree. And <laughs> my professional, non-professional opinion. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of times these ingredients and seed oils are added just to extend the shelf life of the product, and they have no nutritional benefit at all to our pets. And they might be put in there to extend shelf life. They might be put in there to change the consistency of it, Mm -hmm. but there's no need. There's no need for these completely unnatural, processed, highly processed um ingredients. There's just no reason for it. And it's hurting our dogs. And it's so beautiful to see the shift um, in the mindset of pet parents for wanting single ingredient, for wanting natural, for wanting fresher food. And and that's why it's it's great to be a part of that community who is helping pet parents realize the benefits of fresh foods and the benefits of feeding biologically appropriate foods. Like I think a couple years ago, that word biologically appropriate, it was not floating around. Like that's, that's new. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's interesting how we get 
where we are um, because as huge as, you know, Karen Becker and Ronnie Habib are, I actually found some smaller content creators. Well, at the time were smaller, like Kimberly Gautier. And I found her and she led me to bigger people like Karen and Rodney. And so it's something that I definitely feel like I heard, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Um, I have a I have a playlist on YouTube that I'm actually like, it's very cringeworthy, but I leave it up there. It's like my transition to feeding my dogs a raw food diet because it was like every couple of days I'd come on and like, I learned something new. This is what I've learned about why I need to switch my dogs to a raw food diet. And like I said, it's very cringeworthy now (laughs) looking back. But, um, so I feel like there were people saying thing like I, I mm-hmm. if, if I went back to those videos and I want to say they're a good six or seven years old now um I, I I there was a lot of species specific species appropriate biologically appropriate but I don't feel like it was like you were saying it was in a very very like niche part of the internet <laughs> and now that like niche has kind of grown and it's just growing and growing and growing Um, so yeah, I think it is definitely getting more out there, but I also, you know, I, I worry a little bit, um, because as soon as something kind of clicks with people, big pet food, take it on, you know what I mean? Like, um, the feed, feed your dog an evolutionary diet. And then we're going to see that on like a blue Buffalo, right? Like, Come on, <laughs> you know, the wolves on the packaging and, and, you know, the bobcats and the lynxes. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, you know, yeah. and, and um, I, hey, you know what? 12, 15 years ago, it got me because that's what I fed, because that's what I saw in the commercials. And I was like, that must be the best thing to feed them because they're, you know, these wild animals at heart. But um, thank goodness I know better now. But. Um, yeah, I think it is definitely growing and more and more people are saying it. And I think kind of the point I was saying is that uh, there are people who are using these as, as buzzwords and not actual, Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, they're, they're not, they're not peddling what the intent, I guess. And that's always concerning, Mm -hmm. but, but you know, the underlying intention is certainly there. And if people look it up, they're going to find Hopefully they'll find the correct information and good information on it. Um, but yeah, it is important that we honor our dogs and our cats for the species that they are. And with our dogs being carnivores and granted, okay, yes, they are. And, and even among people in the healthy pet space, like I'll listen to 10 different veterinarians talk about fresh food diets and Mm -hmm. seven out of 10 of them will talk about dogs being carnivores and we need to primarily feed them meat. And the other three will say, well, but they have evolved and we can feed them more vegetables. And some, some people do think that dogs need more vegetables than others. And, um, and that even some carbohydrates aren't going to hurt them. And so, you know, it's, it's difficult (laughs) navigating, um, but again, I think that's why you have to feed the animal in front of you. Go, oh, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry to cut you off. Have you read the forever dog book? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah. No, like I like the book. I love the book, but I also take a lot of it with a grain of salt because I think plants are primarily for medicine. And again, feed the mm-hmm. dog in front of you, right? Like if your dog needs something that my dog doesn't, by all means, feed it. Um, but I just, my experience with my dogs thus far in my life, I feel like plants are primarily medicine. We feed a very, very, very small amount <laughs> on a daily basis. And, um, you know, they're, they're primarily carnivores, but yeah, there are some really great benefits. If my dog had cancer, you know what? I'd be right back in that book. <laughs> like, what can I add? You know, tell me more about broccoli. <laughs> so you said that you add um, 
plant-based food daily to your dog's diet. Which one is it? Because I, I thought you said Kim doesn't like any fruit or veg. She doesn't. And I don't add it in. I buy commercially made foods. I, I rotate um, and they just have a very small amount in there. So like right now I'm rotating between small batch, Bones & Co., uh, Viva Raw, and Fetching Foods. And then she gets, she eats goat's milk for breakfast. And so her meat is at night. Um, that's what she, or in the evening, that's what she gets for dinner. So it's already in there and she can't pick it out because they're all grinds. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's definitely certain vitamins and minerals in fruits or vegetables that can be more difficult to find in meat sources. So they're Mm -hmm. used to balance um, the the pre-made raw or the pre-made meals. Um, the reason I brought up forever dog book is because there's such an interesting section in there about the evolution of the pet food industry and how originally like back in the day, people were just feeding table scraps and feeding whatever leftovers they had from their family's meals. Of course, back then everything was a lot more natural. Everything was a not treated with hormones. It was not treated with antibiotics. So it was much healthier for our dogs. But then someone had the idea, I don't even remember the guy's name, but someone had an idea to create a biscuit, a cookie, and it was mainly corn and sugar based. And then from there, the industry evolved into having canned food for dogs. And that's how dog food came to be. And now it's interesting to see how these huge corporations, like, I don't know if you saw this week, I believe it was more purchasing a company that is more natural, how these big companies are now seeing all this research that's coming out and they're trying to move towards the more species appropriate natural feeding. But, you know, that's to be continued and to be seen what kind of bad ingredients they add to those foods. I know I'm, I'm a little, I mean, I'm not hugely concerned because I don't feed those, but I I know that a lot of healthy pet food stores, you know, they still have, for the most part, I'm sure there are some that don't, um, but they, they kind of have to stock kibble because that's how you get people in the door. Mm -hmm. Um, and educate them Mm -hmm. because it's a huge, just like, well, you know, like it is, it's all about education. That's how you sell your product, um, in the healthy pet space. And, um, but my, my cats, oh my goodness, they're freeze dried cat treats. My cat origins specifically, um, my cats love their freeze dried treats. And I'm like, oh no, like, I'm just, (laughs) I am just cringing at like, when is the, because even when, once they change the ingredients, they have Gosh, I'd have to go back to to Susan Thixton's blogs uh, to find out, but I want to say they have like a good, I don't know, eighteen months to three years to change the packaging to let you know about it. <laughs> it's it's insane. What? They have, yeah, they have a I long time. They don't have to change the packaging when immediately when they change um, formulations. Uh, they have a mm-hmm. long time to do it. So uh, I you know. Not- We always tell people, always check the label. Even if you're buying the same thing every week, every month, always check the label. But you know what? That food can change long before that label changes. Um, And and the FDA also allows them to make reasonable changes without ever having to. So like if an ingredient they source, suddenly they can't source it and they need to substitute with something, they never have to tell anybody about that. So... It's it's really a shame um, what most pet parents have no idea is going on. And, you know, I mean, sure, there may be some people out there that are like, you can tell me all day long and I don't care. But <laughs> I, hopefully for the most part, people care. They want to know what they're spending their hard earned money to feed their pets on. Right. Like they want to know. Absolutely. And I think. Education, of course, is number one when, you know, trying to help people feed a better diet to their dogs. But sometimes it's difficult because let's just take, for example, feeding bones. 
the first time I fed Grizzly a bone, I literally had a thought in my head and I thought to myself, is this how I kill my dog? Because the first time you're giving your dog a bone, you're like, how is that going to be digested? And until you start feeding the bone and realizing, oh, that is fully digested. Like it comes out. You don't even see it unless you feed too much bone and then it's a little white. But our dog stomachs are much higher in acidity than our stomachs. And that's why they're able to break down bones, not cooked bones. Never feed cooked bones. Whoever is listening to this, no cooked <laughs> bones. The high temperatures harden the bones and make them splinter very easily. And it makes them very difficult to digest because the high temperature changes the protein of the bone. But so for people who haven't done any really research or they don't really have friends or family feeding a raw diet, feeding a bone to your dog is like outrageous. Like that's like crazy. And to take it a step further, Forever Love Club's bestseller to this day are duck heads. And some people see that and they're like, I would never feed my dog that, like never. And the people who have tried duck heads, it is my bestseller because those dogs go crazy for it. And so there, there's that little bit of a, you know, freaky side where you know our dogs are evolved to eat a whole prey so a head for them is super exciting because it has muscle bone secreting organ which is the brain and the eyes and glands all in one so the dogs go crazy for heads but for owners it's a little freaky and it's like something that you know not everyone can get comfortable with which is totally fine you know, like we all do our best. Um, and if you don't want to feed a duck head to your dog, there's still like super healthy options that you could feed instead. But I'm just trying to explain how it's it's not just a, a shift in the mindset of people. It's also taking that leap and getting out of your comfort zone to give your dog the best life. I'm so, so two things. One, I'm so glad you said that taking the leap because when I first started feeding my pets a raw food diet, I was vegetarian. And so the idea of handling raw meat was so I gross to me. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. so gross to me. And now today I am no longer vegetarian. Like I have learned along with how I'm supposed to feed my dogs. I've learned how I'm supposed to feed myself. And I, I'm, I'm no longer vegetarian, so it doesn't gross me out anymore. <laughs> but, um, you, I mean, really, if you just open your mind, you learn so much. That's so funny that you were too. <laughs> um, yep. and I don't know, maybe duckhead is going to be your answer, but it brings up my next question for you, which is like, what is the most out of the box chew or treat that like, you, you get all of the feedback from people like, holy moly, you're creeping me out. You're freaking me out. What is this? <laughs> so I would say it's between the duck heads and some of the furry parts. Um, there's plenty of people who are subscribed to Forever Love Club, and they specifically request no heads or fur. Um which is totally cool and it's totally fine. But I almost wish that more people would try it and see how much their dogs love it because mm -hmm. most dogs will go crazy for it. Um, but I would say it's definitely the duck heads, but it's, it's a, it's this two sided thing where it's also my best seller. So mm -hmm. it's the best seller, <laughs> but it's the freakiest thing. So it's interesting to see that um, contrast. It is. It really is. And I know, you know, a lot of people think, um, and in fact, my mom actually, I, I, I've tried for many, many years. She's bless her heart, but she, you know, she called me the other day and she was like, you told me to feed them, um, bones. I'm not supposed to feed dogs, but, and I'm like, mom, you're feeding them raw bones. You can't feed them cooked bones. And she was like, but they're going to get aggressive. And I'm like, they're not going to get aggressive if you don't 
approach it like they're going to be aggressive <laughs> about it. <laughs> like, um, yeah, do- but because she has had issues with dogs in the past that would fight over pig ears and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, if you're that concerned, then separate them in different rooms. They'll be okay. Um, but yeah, it is it is interesting, the amount of education, I think, that we really have to put into, um, you know, selling, selling a product like yours, um, selling people on the idea of what is actually healthy for our pets to eat. Um, but yeah, the duck head, I, I'm, yeah, I, I need to, I need to try that with Kim. I keep, I try, I try, every, I'm telling you, I try everything with her. I'm going to try, I'm going to, I don't, I've never tried a duck head with her. <laughs> so maybe I'll have to try that. But what, so I know I always see, um, Grizzly, your dog, he is in like all the reels and he eats, I swear it's like he, he'll just eat anything, but what is his favorite? Duck heads. <laughs> is it? <laughs> duck- so duck heads are his favorite. And I know this because Grizzly is the sweetest boy. Like he is so loving and cuddly and he's, you know, just the kindest dog. And the first time I gave him a duck head, I went to take it away from him because it's too big for his size to finish the whole thing in one go. Mm-hmm. So I went to take it away from him. And he snapped at me and growled at me to the point where like, I got scared and I took my hand away from him really fast. Like literally I got scared of my own seven pound dog. I was like, what? And I was like, wow, he really wants to guard this duck head. And of course never had that reaction with any other two. And then again, a few months later when I had uh, duck heads in production again, I gave him another one. And this time he didn't like snap at me where he went to like, try to like, I don't think it would actually bite me, but the first time he tried to like go for my hand, but this time he just growled when I tried to take it away from him. So I'm like, all right, man, like I get it. You're a duck hat, duck head uh, fanatic. I understand. So now I, a lot of my uh, customers also ask about this. Like, how do I take the shoe away from my dog? If they're not supposed to have the whole thing, I really should be reeling Grizzly away with another treat so that he comes to the treat and I grab the duck head. But I just didn't feel the need to do that with him because with all the other shoes, I take it away from him and he had no issue. So definitely the duck heads. Wow. What about yeah. him? Oh yeah. You said, you said the beef time. The yeah, time. she loves the beef. I mean, she loves everything, but I, I think just her her reaction to that beef tongue that day, I'm like, okay, you really, really like that. <laughs> um, Have you tried butter tongue? Uh, yeah, I think we've had that before, too. She likes it just as, yeah, t- she likes tongue, for sure. Like, I, we, I think we've had both. Um. Yeah, pretty sure. So, mm-hmm. um, the, I, I'm, I'm interested to give her the, I think it is the whiting filet this month because seafood in general is not usually her favorite, but she likes the anchovies from you. And she, if I, you know, open up a can of fresh sardines, she's okay. But if I try to give her like shrimp or oyster or any, you know, anything like that, um, scallop, she's not a big, fan um so the fish i'm, I'm excited to, to let her try the whiting filet this month <laughs> you know what's interesting about the um shrimp and i bring this up because this is i had shrimp um in stock and was shipping it back in like february and i tried to source shrimp again recently and this is what i found out and i think this is an important message for people and a question that people should be bringing to whatever company they're buying shrimp from. So this time around, I was trying to store shrimp again because everyone's asking for it. And what I found out is that 99.9% of shrimp, even if it's wild caught, is usually salted or treated with a, um, treated with a chemical that is basically salt, like a similar compound to salt. And this is because when the shrimp is sold to grocery stores, humans 
do not want to buy shrimp that is dark or black. They want to see pink shrimp. Mm -hmm. So basically what the salt does is that it maintains that pink color. And if shrimp is not salted, it will turn brown or dark or darker color. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying, um, or not you, but anyone listening mm -hmm. is buying shrimp for their dog, ask whoever you're buying it from, whether it's been salted or not. And for this reason, I'm sorry to say, but forever is just not going to have shrimp again because the, the batch I, got, I made back in February was unsalted, but all of a sudden you can't find them anywhere. Yeah. Shrimp is a really interesting one because, um, I don't, it's, it's a very adulterated, uh, we, we learned this a number of years ago. Um, you have to be very careful where yeah. you're getting it from. Like you said, um, if you get it from other countries, a lot of time they will inject them to make them plumper to get the weight up. So they sell for more. And so, yeah, there, there's a lot of adulteration going on, <laughs> um, with shrimp and shrimp in general, like around the world. It's not our favorite. Well, my husband's allergic to it, so mm -hmm. I just mostly just don't eat it, but um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's interesting the things that we don't think much about. And then it comes up in, in conversation or like, Oh, did you know that's so cool? <laughs> like to learn new things about, um, shrimp. I didn't know they were salted. Um, so, okay. Obviously love the product and I hope everyone listening goes and decides to try out a forever love club box. It, get the box. Uh, you're going to, your dog is going to love it. But even if you just want to buy a one-off and try it out, uh, how can people do that? How can people follow you and how can people get their hands on some forever love club treats and shoes? Definitely. So it's super easy. It's just foreverloveclub.com. Same thing on Instagram, but make sure you type fur, F-U-R, like dog fur, Forever Love Club. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> play on words. Yeah. But yeah. Foreverloveclub.com, Forever Love Club on Instagram and on TikTok. Awesome. Well, again, I know your dog is going to love these treats. I, oh, I will share them with my cats too because they are, I mean, they're single ingredient. There's nothing wrong with sharing them with, with your cats. I, I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't think my cat would know what to do with a duck head, but um, certainly <laughs> the other treats I can cut up or break up, <laughs> make them smaller and feed them to my cats. I, I, you know, one more thing before I let you go, I find it really, really interesting. Um, one company in particular that I have been buying treats from for a long time, they're everywhere. They're, you know, most people would, would know of them. Um, and they're single ingredient freeze dried treats. If I buy a bag of dog versus a bag of cat, the bag of cat, the same thing is going to be fewer ounces and cost more than the bag of dog. And it's the exact same product. Um, I don't know why this is, but I always buy the dog <gasps> and just give it to my cats because there's, it's literally the exact same thing. Uh, and I, I know I have done, like I have gifted treats to people that I know who have cats and I'll put the dog bag in there because that's what I buy. And they're like, I don't ha like, I don't have a dog. I'm like, listen, literally it is the exact same thing. Stop wasting your money yep. <laughs> on buying the cat bag. <laughs> I don't know why this is, but the I just thought I'd throw that in. Yeah. The ingredient, well, they're single yeah. ingredient. It's like, yeah, it's the exact same thing. Exactly. The thing, the ingredient list says everything you need to know. And yeah. just a quick about freeze drying. So there's been people who ask me, are you going to start carrying freeze dried? And freeze dried is great. It's very healthy for your dog. Love it. Love it. Love that people are feeding freeze dried, but forever is not going to have it because it just takes a lot of um, energy to freeze dry something. And since I'm so focused on being eco-friendly, I don't want to go into the freeze drying um, industry if for anyone who was wondering about that. But freeze dried is pretty much freeze dried, raw, dehydrated, raw people. A lot of people consider these foods raw because everything is minimally processed. So as long as you're feeding minimally processed, that's what matters. 
Yeah. And I apologize because I know your stuff is dehydrated. I I should, I was comparing apples and oranges, but, um, (laughs) yeah, I, I dehydrated, freeze dried. I, yeah, they're very similar. I mean, the process, like, like you said, to get something freeze dried, um, the amount of energy it takes is, is much greater. Like you were saying, it's also much more expensive. Um, like, just getting the machinery and everything is much more expensive. So um, that's why you pay more for freeze dry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, okay, go to Forever Love Club, F U R, F U R, E U V E R, Love Club.com. Try it out for yourself. I know your pets are going to love it. You don't have to thank me, but do thank Susanna and Grizzly. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Oh, yeah. No, I'm so glad to have you on. Thank you so much for your time and for everything you're doing for our pets. Um, So with that, I'm going to say bye. And if you have any parting words, go for it. (laughs) I'm just grateful that I was able to be on the podcast. And I hope that you learned something today. And yeah, let's keep in touch on uh, Instagram or TikTok. Oh, oh, oh.